I believe that there is something very unique that will happen here today. It is in Psalm 133, verse 1, all the way to verse 3. And I want us to read it together. I want to go. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the bed, even Aaron's bed that went down to the skirts of his garment. Verse 3. As the dew of Hammon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life. Give the Lord a clap and a shout of praise. This morning, I want us to expect first the oil. The oil flow as a result of these brethren in unity. And number two, the commanded blessing. The anointing handles the yoke and the blessing handles the curse. You see people here, people everywhere, people all the way on the, the whole road is jammed. People are coming from everywhere. That is the beauty of heaven. Multitudes and crowds from every part of the world. It is one thing for various locations to hold, but it is one mega thing. I have a vision I've told you before. When one day we will kneel down on our knees like 10 million people at once, lifting hands and worshiping God in a, in, in, in a plain arena where we are just, where God will just look down from heaven. And just see the view of his creature worshiping and honoring him. This is a tiny fragment of, of that day. But I believe it's a new day. And whenever it is time for us to honor God like this on Sunday morning and when we ask for us to do that, don't hesitate. It is beautiful, it is powerful, it is anointed. It carries a different flavor. A different flavor, different from what you are used to. Can you give the Lord a big clap and a loud shout of praise? Look at somebody by your side. Tell them there is a flow of the oil right now. And there is a flow of the blessing right now. You will not miss your portion. That's right. Already. Well done for doing your work. I, I sit here. Already. The chains are broken here already. The yokes are breaking here already. Now lift up your two hands everywhere you are. Pre-convention encounter. God will give us a foretaste of the things we shall be experiencing at this convention. Lift your hands and just begin to worship him. Father, we give you the praise. Father, we give you the honor. Father, we give you the adoration. Worship him. Just honor him. Honor him. Adore him. In the company of your brethren. Please make the fire available. Make the overflows available. If your hands high. Just begin to worship him. The next seven minutes there will be an eruption in this place.
Lift your hands everywhere you are. And if it is possible, you stand up on your feet if you can. With hands lifted. Everywhere you are. Everywhere you are. Hands lifted. Shakoko bakaya. Lift those hands up. His presence is here. His anointing is here. His oil is here. Whisper that name. Jesus. It is written in that day the burden shall be lifted from off your shoulder and the yoke from off your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Power! Hey, 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 hey! Father, let your presence, let your power let your presence, that's right. Na hushada galada na. Et se perona na huzadi ala huza. Let your power, let your presence, let your oil, let your anointing flow here right now. Touch somebody, heal somebody, deliver somebody, liberate somebody today. Blessed be your name. Lift your hands high. I believe there's something God has already in store for you. There is a healing, there is a deliverance, there is a help, there is a mercy, there is a grace that God has in store for you this morning. There is an oil, there is a mantle, there is a... And you are glorious, so glorious in your way. There is a mantle for you. There is a help for you. There is a release for you. All you need to do is to scream and receive at the top of your voice. At the top of your voice. And what God has in store for you here will be released. Are you ready to receive what he has for you this morning? I want to say the name of Jesus. One, two, three. You place your hand on yourself and scream and receive at the top of your voice. And what is yours this morning shall be released. Consuming fire, God. I have come before your throne to be fired up, oh God. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. Oh, consuming fire, God. I have come before your throne to be fired up, oh God. Let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow, let it flow, let it fire from the throne, hey, let it flow, hey, hey, let it flow, let it flow, hey, let it flow, let it flow, let the fire, fire from the throne.
What are you receiving? What God has in store for you this morning? The help from, from above, the release from above, the direction from above, the oil from above, the mantle from above, lift the spirit and the intervention from above. Are you ready? In the name of Jesus, one, two, and three. just happened and we shall hear from you shortly now clap your hands all ye people shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph slow shake somebody's hands and welcome them to the presence of God as you take yourself Praise and be seated. Making every available space available for the people. How many of us already? That's under the gallery, right? Where is this? Okay. The gallery. Give the Lord the praise. Give the Lord the praise. The Spirit of the Lord is moving as the waters cover the seas. How many of us this morning you already have a testimony? Something already happened to you. All right. Everybody has a testimony. Now, how many has a testimony you would like to share if you have an opportunity now from this from this session of worship and from this opening session? You have a testimony you would love to share. Excellent. How many hands? Let me see the hands. Alright, very, very soon I'll welcome you to come forward. And for your information, we are working very hard on the cooling system. Very, very hard. Very soon it will be complete history. Okay? Just very, very soon. Give the Lord a praise as you take your seat. Okay, they are working on that on the gallery like a highway in London or something. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 5 and in Verse 14 and 16. You can open that curtain right in the front here so that those in the front can have access directly possible. Alright? He had the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Verse 16. Alright, let's go all the way to verse 15. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And he giveth light to all that are in the house. 
Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The Lord bless his word in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In this morning of breaking limits, which will be the focus of our prayer at the end, we are speaking on shining as light at the top. The objective of our breaking limits is to shine as light at the top. At the end of this message, I would ask you to own your light. What we did at the crossover service could be done in case there is um, more crisis of space. That is, just fill up as many spaces as are available. Our objective this morning is to understand why we should shine as light at the top. And number two, understanding what to do to get there. Why should we shine as light at the top? What do we do to get to the top places in God and in life. By way of introduction, there are three things the scripture makes clear. Number one, we are the light of the world. Number two, we are a city set on a hill. And number three, we must not be hid. First, we are the light of the world. Number two, we are a city set on a hill. Number three, we must not be hid. Somebody say after me, I am designed. Say it loud, I am designed to be the light of the world. I am designed to be a city set on a hill. I am designed never to be hid. And I announce to someone here today, as God has designed and destined you to be, so shall you be. In your family, in your community, in your generation, as God has designed you to be, so shall you be. Lift up your right hand and establish it before God one minute. So shall it be in Jesus' precious name. Please be seated. Question is, meaning is, we are expected to shine as light for God at the topmost places of life. We are expected to shine as lights for God at the topmost places of life. You are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be healed. 
We are designed to shine as lights for God at the topmost places of life. The question is, for what purpose? Why should we shine as lights at the topmost places of life? Number one, to represent God well to our generation. We are to shine as lights at the topmost places of life to represent God well to our generation. To represent God well to our generation. If we do not, once we don't shine, once we live as mediocres in the things we do and we don't deliver it excellently, we misrepresent God to our generation. To represent God well to our generation. Number two, to bring maximum honor and glory to God with our results. To bring maximum honor and glory to God with our results. He said, let your light so shine that men might see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. To bring maximum honor and glory to God with our results. Number three, to bring souls into the kingdom with our testimony of excellence. To bring souls into the kingdom with our testimony of excellence. Why must we shine as lights at the top places of life? To represent God well to our generation. To bring maximum honor and glory to God with our resolves. Thirdly, to bring souls into the kingdom with our testimony of excellence. Somebody said that unbelievers don't have Bibles. And even if they have Bibles, they don't read the Bibles. The Christian is the Bible the unbeliever reads. Am I communicating? The Christian is the Bible the unbeliever reads. The Christian is the Bible the unsaved reads. No wonder you do some things sometimes and, say, and you call yourself a Christian and you claim to be a Christian. The Christian, so we are to bring souls to God with our testimony of excellence. Number four, to bring godly influence to bear on institutions and nations under our jurisdiction. To bring godly influence or kingdom influence to bear on those institutions or nations or organizations under our jurisdiction. That is, God wants us to shine as light at the top places of, of, of the earth. So that wherever you are found, every organization under you, every institution under you, every nation under you can have the influence of the kingdom on them. Because systems are influenced from the top down, not from the, not from the, not from down up, it's from the top down. To bring godly influence. There are people here today, I believe, that God is about to assist you to be positioned where you need to be positioned. So that the influence of the kingdom can be felt under your jurisdiction, within your jurisdiction. If you believe that, shout the loudest, say amen. I believe God, somebody, a Daniel is about to be positioned somewhere in a Babylon to influence a nation. A Joseph is about to be positioned to influence a nation like Joseph. And Esther, a Queen Esther, a woman, is about to be positioned somewhere to bring godly influence. If there is anybody who believes you are a Daniel, a Joseph, an Esther, an Abraham in your generation, you say a louder, Amen. Look at your neighbor, say your generation is waiting for you. Your nation is waiting for your influence. Your institution is waiting for your influence. Your organization is waiting for your influence. You believe that, say a loud amen. Number five and finally, to function as a voice for the kingdom where necessary. To function as a voice for the kingdom where necessary. God positions 
positions his people. He positioned Daniel. He positioned Joseph. He positioned Esther. He positioned Joseph of Arimathea in their days so they can serve as the voices for the kingdom. When it is time to speak concerning godly values in the National Assembly or to speak in from your board of education or whatever it is, you are able to do so as a voice for the kingdom. So that it is not only the voice of, of the world, not only the voice of the secular system, not only the voice of the Antichrist, not only the voice of the anti-God that is speaking where there is a need to speak. There are people here, I announce today, God will give you a voice and that voice shall be used for the kingdom. Lift up your right and say in the name of Jesus, Father, give me a voice that will be used for the kingdom, for the gospel in my generation. Say, I receive the voice to speak and my generation must hear. You believe that? Say loud, amen. All right. Let your light shine. Question is, what does it mean to shine? I want to answer that question very quickly and then we begin to look at the secrets of shining. What does it mean to shine? And when we are talking of shining now, we are talking of Shining on the behalf of God, on the behalf of the kingdom, that men might see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. What does it mean to shine? Number one, it is to stand out or be outstanding for God. To stand out or be outstanding in what you do in life. To stand out or be outstanding. Let your light shine. Stand out, be outstanding. Number two, it means to release the very best. In life. You are not holding back to release the very best. Let your light shine. Release your very best. Be an A grade personality in the things you do as a child of God. A grade. Number three, it means to release your full potentials. When the light is dim, its potential is not out. When it is brightly shining, its full potentials is out. To release your full potentials. And that is in whatever you do as a child of God. Number four, it means to produce exceptional and excellent results in life. Let your light so shine. Produce exceptional results. Produce excellent results. Let your world know you as a child of God, as a person of excellence, as a person who is exceptional. Finally, let your light to shine means to live commendably and honorably to live commendably and honorably your life your result your life and results are commendable your life your results are honorable they bring commendation to you they bring honor to your God Live commendably. Live honorably. Don't be a child of God in the workplace that is bringing dishonor to the kingdom by the way you carry out your assignment. Don't be a child of God in your family that brings disgrace to God by the way you carry out your lifestyle. Shine. Live commendably. Live honorably. In the season we are in, I believe there is someone here hearing the sound of my voice whose life is about to bring maximum honor to God. If you are about to say loud, Amen. So it means to stand out or be outstanding for God. It means to, to release your very best in life. It means to release your full potentials and 
And number four, it means to produce exceptional and excellent results. Number five, it is to live commendably and honorably. I see somebody step in there. You are the one say a loud amen. You are the one say a loud amen. What are the keys to shining at the top in life? What are the keys to shining at the top in life? What are the keys? Number one is the heart for God. You want to shine at the top in life. The Bible said in Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Seek first. Psalm 63 verse 8. He said, my soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. I follow you hard and you hold me up. I am pursuing you very hard and you hold me up. Hold. That is you held me up. You didn't, you didn't let me drop. In this kingdom, if you want to be a Daniel, a Joseph, a Queen Esther for your generation. You need the heart for God. Your heart for God determines your height in life. Your heart for God determines your path in, with God. We, you need a heart for God. Dedication to God remains a secret of distinction in life. The heart for God. Solomon had that heart. The Bible said, and Solomon loved the Lord. And God visited him and made him the most, most important king that ever existed in his time. First Kings chapter 3 and in verse 3. King Uzziah loved the Lord in 2 Chronicles chapter 26 and in verse 5. And the outcome of Uzziah's life was that he sought God and God, as long as he sought God, the Lord made him relevant, important, critical in his generation. He made him successful. Number two key is what I'll call kingdom vision. Kingdom vision. Or a, or a kingdom mindset. What is the meaning of that? Having the mind or the vision to accomplish big things for the sake of the kingdom. The mindset of accompanying big things for the sake of the kingdom. I am not trying to achieve big things for myself. I'm not trying to look for money for myself. I'm not trying to make a name for myself. But because I belong to God... Big things must be achieved through my life for the sake of God. That was what Matthew chapter 5 verse 14 and 16 was saying. Let your light so shine. So that men can behold your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven. John chapter 15 verse 16. You have not chosen me but I have chosen you. So that you can go forth and bring forth fruit. Produce results. Results that are durable, results that are lasting. Not for your sake, but for my sake. Somebody say loud amen. That was what the mother of Samuel did when she was looking for a child. Lord, I am not looking for a child for myself. I know you have a need for a priest in your house. First Samuel chapter 1 verse 11. Give me a child, I'll give you a priest. I'm not looking, I'm not trying to make a name. I'm not trying to, I'm not struggling to be like other people. I know there is a need in your house. Give me a child and I will give that child back to you. That's called kingdom vision, kingdom mindset. That is the things you are about to achieve is not for your sake, but for the sake of the kingdom. That was the story of David. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? First Samuel chapter 17 verse 26. He was not trying to kill Goliath to prove a point. He was not trying to kill Goliath to prove a point. He was not trying to kill Goliath to make a name. 
He was very, very angry on behalf of God. Why should God be mocked like this? I want to rise and contend with this man. Am I communicating? Is there anybody here with that kind of jealousy on behalf of God? To say that why should the children of the enemy be more popular than the children of God? Why should the children, the antichrist people, be more influential than the children of the kingdom? Why is it that when it is time to speak and to say something, it is people of the other side that are talking and not the people of the kingdom? I am God, here am I. Make me an instrument in your hands. Make me a voice in my generation. And I am going to speak on your behalf. If there is anybody like that, say loud, Amen. Somebody say after me, say, Father, achieve. Say, Father, achieve your greatness through my life. Say it louder. Say, Father, I am available. Achieve your greatness through my life. Am I speaking to anybody here at all? We have somebody saying, I'm not trying to become a senator or become a, this, a governor or become a this or that to make a name. I want, I want to step in there so that, so that I can, I can, I can bring the influence of the kingdom, influence that is godly into the system. I am not trying to look for money so I can be materialistic. I want to, I want to, I want to push the cause of the gospel. I want to impact lives. I want to help the orphans and the widows and the, and the less privileged and I want churches planted. Are you here? Is somebody here like that this morning? I'm not, there's nothing I am looking for that is personal. I am looking for something that is kingdom. And if there is somebody here like that, I see God positioning you where you belong. You believe that, shout the loudest, amen. Take your seat. Up, that was kingdom vision, kingdom mindset. Number three, secret of shining as light to the top. Oh. All our friends there are not able to have a seat. Don't worry. Next time. Hallelujah. But it's a, it's a good problem. It's a good problem. Numbers is a whole book of the Bible. Hallelujah. The Bible said in, in, in Proverbs chapter 14 verse 28. Have you read it before? Proverbs 14 28. In the multitude of people is the king's honor. Multitudes, crowds bring him honor. He said in the want of people is the destruction of the prince. The earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. As the waters cover the seas. Somebody shout a loud amen. amen. What is the key number three? Is upright living. Upright. I want to show you something today. That you may not have seen before. Upright living. Hear this. When you decide to be Upright. You are destined to end right up. If you have to give him the praise for that, give him the praise for that. When you decide to be upright, you are destined to end right up. Somebody say, but at times when you are upright, they push you down. No, they may try initially like they tried in the case of Joseph. How many of you remember the, the vision of Joseph in Genesis chapter 37 verse 7? Genesis 37 verse 7. Joseph said, he said, for behold, we were binding sheaves in the field. And lo, my sheaf arose. And also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about. 
But he didn't mention that their own stood upright. They only stood round about and did obeisance. That vision did not only reveal the future of Joseph, it revealed the character of Joseph. That character is upright. My grass bundle stood upright. That upright stand represents me. Your own couldn't stand upright, so they had to bow for me. When the grass is slanted, when the bundle is slanted, it must bow, it must bow. When it's upright, it is stable. Do you picture it? A bundle of grass, sheaf, it is upright, it is stable. If it is standing to the side, it must bow. It must fall. That vision represented not just the future of Joseph, but the character of Joseph. The meaning is, if you decide to be upright, you have become designed to be right up. At the end of the day, Joseph was on top of all of them. Genesis chapter 37 and in verse 2, he always brought the bad report of his brethren to his father. He was a man alone. He was on one side, the others were on one side. No wonder he became the prime minister. Job, in Job chapter 1 verse 1 to 3, was a man who was upright and feared God and eschewed evil. Hear me brothers and sisters, if you want to fulfill your destiny, you want to fulfill your destiny, be upright, be upright. Three days ago, I called our account officer because, you know, people give you gift as their prophet, prophet's offering, priest offering. And they say, okay, this, the Lord led me to give you this. Now, one of those envelopes I saw, it was written, Heavenly Father, I am giving you this seed. And it was handed to me, Heavenly Father, I am giving you this seed. So that you can change my story. And I look up to you for answers. The money inside it was in six zeros. Okay, big envelope. But when I read the caption at the back, I am not Heavenly Father. And it is impossible for me to pretend that I didn't read what is on the envelope. Three days ago. So I called... uh, the, the account officer said, this one is for Heavenly Father. Put it in the, where it belongs for Heavenly Father. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So the man said to me, he said, ah, he didn't know that uh, after somebody handed something to me and said, this is for you, you still have the time to still read the envelope. Well, I have to read it to be double sure that the person did not make a mistake. People can easily put, there, yesterday, somebody was in my office yesterday, and he said, you, this is first fruit. That time, um, this is the first business he did. He wants to give first fruit. I said, for what purpose is it? He said, oh, um, he has brought it so I can assist him give it. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, you know what? My secretary is right there. Go to him, tell him what it is. He will assist you, pass it. He will assist you to drop it. (laughs) Oh yes, I had to ask. Because Adam ate one apple and lost a garden. There are people who close their future because of taking what is not theirs. Am I communicating to you at all? How? How? Oh. Sorry about this. At least there should be some form of speakers out there, please. I trust that next time we won't have such a challenge where there will be nowhere for people to sit.
Walk on it. Am I speaking to somebody here? Look at your neighbor. Say, if you want to be right up, start by being upright. Tell somebody, say, if you want to end right up, start by being upright. Am I communicating? You don't cut corners. You are not crooked. You are straight. Integrity will undergird authority. It will, it will sustain kingdom responsibility. And I believe that somebody today, whatever was your testimony in the time past that was not correct from today, God will give you a correct testimony. From today, God will give you the grace to do the right things. If you believe that, say loud, amen. If you believe that, say the loudest, say amen. If you believe that, say amen on the top of your voice. <laughs> number four. Please take your seat. I'll be through with one more number. Number four is the heart for people. The heart for people. The heart for people is key to height of influence. A heart for people. The heart for people will naturally provoke the followership of people. It will naturally provoke the followership of people. It is said in leadership that people don't care what you know until they know that you care. What was it that made Joseph a a heart for people? Genesis chapter 40 from verse 5 to verse 7. We may not have the time to read. He saw the butler and the baker with their dreams. He was moved to find out why their countenance was sad. By interfering, I mean, by intervening in their situation. Later on, he had to find himself in the palace of Pharaoh. A heart for people. Placed him as leader in Egypt. Abraham, Genesis 14 verse 14. He had children that were born in his house. That he trained. He trained other people's children. 318 out of them. That he formed into a private army. When he had no child of his yet. The heart for people. David. When David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should molest the people of my God? It was a heart for people he was displaying. In 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 26, a heart for people. In 1 Samuel chapter 22 verse 1 to 2, the Bible said that David was then in a, therefore divided thence and escaped to the cave of Adullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down feeder to him. And everyone that is in distress, that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented, they gathered themselves to him, and he became captain over them. Distressed people, discontented people, people indebted, people challenged. They came under, and even though he himself was running from Saul, he was looking for where to lay his head, yet he had enough heart for people to accommodate them. And of course, Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 3 and 4. When the wall of Jerusalem, when the, the report came, they said to me, the remnant that are left in captivity there in the province are in great affliction and in reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down and the gates thereof are burnt with fire. And it came to pass, when I heard this word, that I sat down and I wept. When he heard that the, his people were in captivity, when he heard that the wall of Jerusalem was broken, they didn't even have where to stay. He began to cry. And God used that to take him up and position him as the governor of Judah. What is your heart for people? There are many people who want to influence people without having a heart for people. No heart for people. But my brothers and my sisters, if you want God to facilitate your influence at the top and to make you 
an influencer among men. You need a heart for people. And so, what do I do to function at the top or literally break limits? I need a heart for God. I need vision, kingdom vision. I need upright living. I need the heart for people. I need, number five, the release of excellence. The release of excellence. The release of the very best of you. Proverbs 22, 29. Seest thou a man that is diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before ordinary men. Have you seen a person? Have you seen a man? Have you seen a woman? Have you seen anybody that is diligent in his business? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before ordinary men. What are we talking about? Everywhere you find yourself, give life all that you have got. It is a full release of your potentials and the full release of your best. The full release of your potentials, the full release of your best. I think it was in Acts of the Apostles chapter 20 and in verse 20. Where Paul the Apostle was talking about how he has kept nothing back. I have kept nothing back. I have kept back nothing. I gave it my all. I gave it my best. If you want to go to the top, you don't walk on the ladder of mediocrity. You walk on the ladder of excellence. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10. Whatsoever your hand find to do, give it everything you have got. Give it everything you have got. Give it everything you have got. I told you this story before. When I was a medical student, I normally went to the back of the physiology laboratory to pray during break time. One of those days, I met a young man. He was praying there too. And I just shared a scripture with him. It set him on fire. The next day, I was in 200 level. Second year medicine. He was in 300 level. Next day, he came. Next day, he kept coming. He kept coming. He kept coming. And then he said, you know what? I am the president of the Medical Students Fellowship. What you are sharing with only me, can you come and help me share it with the whole fellowship? So I went and shared it. The whole place was ablaze. The power of God was everywhere. People were dropping on that power while we were standing on the altar preaching. N- not hand lay. Do you understand? 200 level. Becky and Nature was, Becky, overflow started then. Becky Ibu was in that, uh, formerly Becky Ibu was in that, um, <laughs> Sister Becky was in that service. Wearing a very thick glasses that was like Coca-Cola bottle. Like the bottom of Coca-Cola bottle. She asked somebody, say, where did that guest minister come from? Which ministry did they invite him from? Whole place was ablaze. So much was released. I didn't hold anything back at all. I preached like a man from another world. When it was time to appoint another president after that man, they say I was the one. Unanimously. Then I was president of my school fellowship and then we went for a national conference to University of Lagos. Everybody was there, University of Ibadan, my degree. Everybody was there. The president of each school was to take a segment of the, of the service and they asked me to take five minutes of prayer. I prayed for that five minutes as if I prayed for five hours. By that five minutes, everything happened. Everything dropped. They normally did elections for who will be the president. When they say who will be the president, all of them pointed in one direction. Him is our national president now. (laughs) Yes. Nigerian Conference of Christian Medical and Dental Students. Are you following what I'm saying here? I didn't, we didn't come where we were by crookedness. You give life all, give every opportunity, do it like it is your last. Anything you are asked to do with your life, stand up on your feet somebody. Anything you are, there are people there, they say you should come 
and lead prayer. Yeah. The way you walk from here is a challenge. That that movement needs prayer. It's your turn to lead prayer now. It won't create any impact. That word inside you, push it with fire. Let the devil himself know. Let him feel something. The best of life answers to the best of man. When you walk into an interview, the way you walk in, they, 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 they watch you. The, the, the steps you take, how you look. They watch everything. They watch the confidence of your courage. The confidence of your delivery. Because they know that without confidence, there can be no competence. I am not talking to you from in my 500 level. They asked me to write something about a particular type of cancer in, in, in histopathology, in pathomorphology. So I went and did all the research. I ransacked everything I could ransack. I put it in writing and presented it. It was a blast. Somebody from that department told me later on that they used it as reference for postgraduate. When I was board of regents of Covenant University when it started nearly, when there was board meeting, I would read as if I was going for an exam. Because they have a vision to, be, to make that university top 20 university in the world by the year of 2020 at that time. I will read Harvard. I will read Oxford. I will read Cambridge. I will read John Hopkins. Ten top universities in the world. What made them top? So that when they say talk, I won't be saying, um, I think we should pray very well. <laughs> or a robot said everybody wants to say something, but not everybody has what to say. But when it is time to speak that you have something to say, somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say a louder amen. Somebody say the loud most amen. Have you received something today? Have you received something today? Have you received something today? When we go for our meetings with our Father and the Lord, at times you have few minutes notice to make a presentation. If you are lucky, you can have overnight. And then, irrespective of the notice, what will be prepared can be a week, a week's, a week's delivery that is pushed into 40 minutes. One of my, my, my brother and friend, every time he'll just tell me, say, look, what you, what you preach to us now is one week seminar. One pastor there told me after our last minute, he said, excuse me, sir, the message you just preached now, I have six messages out of it. That is, apart from it profiting his life, he's going to break it down to six messages. Job has been made busy for him for at least six services. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Don't live life yegeyegeously. <laughs> live life with audacity, with alacrity, with authority. Every time, every time. You know, I tell my wife, I said, the reason why I appear, I try to appear sharp all the time. Even in the house, I can't, I can't, they can't catch me wearing slippers from the bedroom. Yes. <laughs> you can ask her, she's standing here. That slippers, the one they wear in the bathroom. In, how? That in the, in the dream? What is cover, cover, the, the other one that is half soul. 
And the one that you put your leg, that one is more honorable. I say because I don't know who I will meet at any time. I don't want to be taken by unawares. If you present me before any president per time, I should be able to address him without needing to go and change and come. Take life more seriously so that you can end more gloriously. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? Yes, you can end more gloriously. There is a space, there's a place at the top, a place of influence for the purpose of the kingdom to, 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 to function for the kingdom adequately. And you must make up your mind that you step into that place. This is pre-convention service. By the time this week is over, we are stepping up and dominating by light. If you are saying amen, say it loud, amen. If you are saying amen, say it loud, amen. If you are saying amen, say it loud, amen. Can somebody give the Lord a big clap and a shout of victory? How many of us are, sh- are about to shine as, as light on the top? I would like you to help me turn on your, your touch light. Your phone light. Anybody turning it on right there, everywhere you are, in the main sanctuary, all the galleries, all the overflows, all the entrances, turn it on. Wave it, wave it, wave it, wave it, wave it, wave it. I need to see the people's, the light of the people who are outside. Yes, yes, yes. In the foyers, I need your light. In all the entrances, the, the, the overflow, the, that's the goodness, the glory gate foyer, the goodness foyer, the grace foyer, and all the places. Wave it, wave it, wave it. Wave it, wave it, wave it. Wave it, wave it, wave it. Father, thank you. Adonai, thank you. Elion, thank you. Make a dash, thank you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. In Jesus' precious name. Now lift it high. I promise that because of the concentration of crowd and also for the sake of those who are standing outside and not having where to, to sit, I'll be closing very, very shortly. But within this brief short period, you are going to pray some prayers. And that prayer is to ask God to make you a light in your generation. A light in my generation. Now wave the, wave the light up. And say after me, say, Father, thank you for your goodness and for your mercy in my life. I give you the praise and the honor in Jesus' name. Keep wave that light as they place the passages on this, on the screen for us. Matthew chapter five. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill that cannot be healed. And he said, let your light so shine before men. That they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Wave it, wave it, wave it. Father, we give you the praise. Father, we give you the praise. Pray this prayer after me and say, Father, Father. say it loud and say, Father, Father. I receive receive the grace grace to shine shine at the top place place in my generation generation. for the kingdom. kingdom. Oh Lord, Lord. in the name of Jesus, Jesus. again say, Father, Father. I receive receive your grace grace to shine shine at the top place place in my generation generation. for the kingdom. kingdom. Oh Lord, Lord. in the name of Jesus, open your mouth. Pray, pray, pray.